Welcome everyone to week two of Magic Page Plugin training. My name is Robert and I'm with Steven and we are again continuing on from week one, which was just a huge success from what we've heard back from feedback during the call and some of the social media uh, exchange afterwards. And we wanna make sure that you understand this is a no pitch webinar. We're not here selling anything except good karma. There's gonna be nothing that, that you have to purchase at the end of this call. Take the notes that you wanna take and know that there will be a replay as long as you're registered for our calls. Stephen, you wanna take it from there? Absolutely, I'm just gonna share my screen, guys. In week one, we briefly went over the settings page and I wanna go over this in more depth. To get to the settings page, you go to a magic page tab here and you go to settings. And the first thing you will notice is your key will be showing. Now. What we recommend you do is if you are planning on having a VA or someone else where you create a new user account under all users in WordPress, hide your key. When they log in, they can't see this box at all. It's invisible. So what you do, you come into users, you'd add new user, you create a username, but an email address in not your current admin email. So use an, a different email address. Don't have to worry about names or anything or website. You'd put in the password and you'd make them an administrator or editor depending on what level of access you want them to have. If they have administrator, they can get to the user accounts. If they've got editor, then they can they do a lot less. And once you set their account up, go and have a look at what access they have. If you did editor, log in as them because you've got the password and the username. So go and check that. And you'll notice on the settings page that this will be gone if you hide the key. Next, we've got the redirect URL. And what this will do is if on the dynamic pages, and we'll talk more about dynamic pages in a little while, uh, if someone went to a page that didn't exist, so let's say uh, um, in the UK, I built a Bristol site and they went to look for the London page by mistake, this will redirect them automatically to the home page. So you wanna make sure this is set to your home page. It normally is by default or a different page. You may want to send them to, you know, DFI Magic Fiend forward slash, let's say the folder on here was location, forward slash London. You may want to send them direct to that page if the page doesn't exist. Next, you've got a choice of Classic Editor or Gutenberg. We're using Cadence Blocks and Cadence Themes, so we pick the Gutenberg editor that works with that. The cache is if you want your site cached and you have no other caching and plugins included. So this is the example, there's many out there that you can install and it will add caching to your site, disable it. If you haven't got a caching plugin or, or optimize a plugin on here, then leave this enabled, all right? Can I, can I ask a question there, Stephen, while you're there? Yes. Because some people may not understand what cache is. Yes. So what, so, what does that mean exactly? That stores a copy locally on the server and it makes it faster to load. A lot of ISPs use caching, um, internet service providers use caching themselves. So sometimes you'll go to a website and it may look out of date compared to your mobile phone when you're on mobile data. That's because your internet service provider will cache pages on their servers that are used the most to save bandwidth of traffic going out from their, their network to other networks. So you may find an out-of-date website on the system. And this is good, another good point, Robert. If you don't clear the cache on a website and you come back to look at your Magic Page website, it may be an old version. So for an example, let's say you, you, we put on a page, hello, my name is Steve. And then I changed it to, hello, my name is Robert. And, and I click save and I go and view the page. And it's, well, why is it still saying, hello, my name is Steve? I've just changed it, what's going on? Come in here and untick, sorry, untick the uh, caching option, disable it, I mean, disable this completely. If you've got another caching plugin installed, there, there'll be an option inside that plugin to clear the cache from it. So make sure you do. Uh, it, it, this, this is a common area, the caching, because you yeah. have websites that do it, you have additional mm -hmm. plugins that do it, and you have browsers that do it. So yeah. sometimes when you're trying to um, edit pages or or items, and you don't know where it's getting cached, 
and it won't fix what you're trying to fix because it's still showing you, even though you fixed it, it's still showing you the cached version. So that's what we end up doing is sometimes in the support calls is we have to make sure that the cache gets cleared, whether it's for the browser or in the website to make sure that the changes are being shown on that version. That's why week one, we covered that and we said, you might want to turn off the caching, disable it, as well as mm. the, the spin tax, so that as you're making all these changes, you're not caching the old version of what you're trying to look at. Correct. Absolutely. And another thing you can do as well, sometimes rebooting your router can help. Look on your mobile phone using mobile data. Go and look at the, on your phone. too. And the other thing I do as well, I have one browser installed on my machine with no plugins whatsoever or ex extensions installed, and that's Firefox. And inside of Firefox, you have to look up a video on how to do this. In the back, there's an option to tick it to say clear all cookies and all cache when I, when I X off of this Firefox window. And so every time you click X, everything's cleared off. It's just a blank Firefox. So you know when you're using that to view your site that there isn't any cache versions of the site already. That saves you one thing less. There's one thing less to look at. Then clear any caching plugins on your website. Your host may include caching automatically at the back end in the admin panel. Make sure that's turned off or cleared. And then finally, if you're still getting the same page up, then you want to make sure that you reboot your router. Sometimes you have to reboot the whole computer to clear things. But if you really don't want to go to that extent, have a mobile phone switched on with mobile data on because that updates a lot quicker normally. Now, working down here, this is the XML sitemap. For those that don't know what that is, that's an extension on your on your website. So it would be mysite.com forward slash XML sitemap some or sitemap.xml, depending on, on what it is. And it will give it creates a full list of all the URL pages all in one file for Google to go and look at. Right. So working down here, right, we've got the home page that it's going to add to the sitemap. And the thing is as well, how often do you want this to update? I always leave it on priority one daily. Posts are the same. Now, post is more important than the home page. So you may go, actually, I'll make that priority um, six, for example. Like, or, you know, and then this is more, more important on posts. Make sure this is top priority. If you're adding posts daily, you want it updated. All standard pages and the magic page. All right. I normally leave these as they are. I don't worry, you know, about them, but it's entirely up to you. You can change it to weekly to update your site weekly. But when Google comes to trawl the site, you'll have a look. Here's your XML site map here as well. So if, if we grab this URL and we go to a new tab and we paste it in, here we go. Here's all the URLs of this site, all the pages it's already got. And the thing to remember, right, these are the MPP pages. These are the, the what's called dynamic pages. So if I copy this now and I go and have a look. So as you can see now, by copying one of these URLs here, I'm now onto this site with a, with a different location. So this is adding all of the locations in here on the sitemap, telling Google when it looks at the sitemap, hello, all these pages are here already. So this helps get them indexed all the way up. So you can have a look. Obviously, there's one called basic home page template. So if I wanted to get rid of that, I'd come into pages or pages and it'll be in here. It'll be this one, I'll trash. I'd get rid of it. I'd remove it. So you want to remove it. By the way, you want to remove any pages before you switch on the sitemap in case Google starts to, to index and check it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. And of course, subscribe to our channel.